and travel again to a fast pace at a stoplight. And the way that things are laid out in city skylines is local roads have lower speeds, collectors have higher speeds than local but lower than arterial, and arterial have the highest speeds of any road that you would that you can zone. So cars are uh, basically drawn to the highest speed roadway uh, in the shortest trip length, and they do a calculation to figure that out. And in real life, people do the same thing. They want to go to the road that has the highest speed and the most direct connection. Generally, arterials are that. Um, but if you have a small city, you're introducing lots of junctions with stoplights, and that can really cause a problem. So a pretty good place to demonstrate this would be in an area that I already have a lot of activity in. So let's just say I introduce a bunch of junctions here. There's a potential to stop at all these junctions now, and they're not benefiting traffic in any way. So minimizing these, either by simply reducing the number of roads that you're putting in place, or by going into your traffic routes, looking at junctions, and toggling the traffic lights, can really improve traffic within your city. Um, but really, you should think about how much road you need in general. If you take a look, every single cell of a road requires 32 cents a week in up upkeep. And a better way to think about this is it would take you $3, between 3 and $4 a week to maintain 10 cells. So 10 cells is the, is the distance between uh, this particular collector in this local road. So that's not very far and that will start to bleed you dry. And if I were to add extra roads all the way through this neighborhood, you know, it's three, six, nine dollars a week just to have those extra roads that aren't benefiting me and are actually taking away from the land that I can zone. So minimize those connections when you can, particularly on uh, collectors and arterials. On local roads, it's not such a big deal because you don't throw in stoplights there or stop signs and uh, it won't uh, mess up your traffic nearly as bad. Tip number three, do not locate residential districts in between your industrial districts and the highway. What you can see here is that uh, industrial trips are for the most part heading towards the highway. Um, for trips that aren't directly serving the city. But if I were to eliminate this access, all these industrial trips will funnel through the city. And if I were to have a direct connection between the industrial area and the residential area like I used to, what you'll probably end up seeing is that many of these trips that would have otherwise gone directly to the highway will go directly through the city. And that's one of the reasons why when I built the city, I actually built it with two accesses to the highway in mind. I didn't want the industrial trips to travel through the residential neighborhood, lowering the desirability of all of the homes that the truck traffic is traversing through. You can see it starting to begin now. You have all these truck trips deciding that this is the best path because of speed and distance. And as a result, all of these uh, neighbors are going to have sound pollution uh, and it's going to lower the property values and make those less desirable, make your city develop less quickly. Uh, so avoid this whenever you can. Avoid having your residential area in between the industrial area and the highway. And related to that, uh, do not concentrate your trip generating uses. So what I have right here is you know, basically a really high trip generation area. And it's okay because this is a relatively small city, but imagine if I were to continue expanding this industrial area. And I went uh, and added up north and, and uh, east over here, and uh, I added, let's say I added a whole bunch of landfills in the same area. Well, all of these trips are now originating from the exact same location. And as a result, all of the traffic is focused on these local roads. So it's in your best interest to have multiple smaller industrial areas and to spread out uses like landfills, recycling centers, and things of that nature so that you don't end up with clogged up roads. Uh, now you're going to see all of this traffic funneling down this road and going down uh, Roberts Street right into the industrial area, right into the residential area rather. And you already see this road has a lot of pressure now, all because we've concentrated these uses. So spread them out wherever you can. Your city will function a lot better if you do so. Uh, next, and our final tip, our fifth tip, is to provide other ways for people to get around other than driving. So that's bike lanes and, uh, and pedestrian paths. So what you'll notice before before uh, is that I had a pedestrian path connecting this residential neighborhood to this industrial area. And the The reason I did that is, you can even see on this local road, there are people that are willing to walk to work. So provide that option. And uh, one thing you might not have realized is that the game makes it a really simple choice. A two-lane road uh, takes uh, 32 cents a week of upkeep and it costs 40 cents a cell to construct. Compare that to a two-lane road with bike lanes. It is 32 cents a week and 40 cents a cell to construct. So why not uh, construct a network of bike lanes in your city? Draw those people out of their cars and get them biking. And you can actually set policies to encourage biking, which will get people out of their car and onto a bike. And the results are generally pretty fast. And I bet you within just a couple seconds, we'll start seeing bikes showing up. And, uh, you know, they're, this is this is highly beneficial to you because these bikes would sim as cars and clog up your roads. And this is a way that I'm able to maintain incredibly high traffic flows just by ensuring that uh, there are ways for people to get to where they need to go outside of a car. So I hope that you found these tips incredibly useful. If you did, please drop a like for the video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. If you want to know whenever I release new videos, I want to release new tips and, trips, tips and tricks videos each week. And I'm still working on my city building series. Uh, the link should be above. Um, so thank you so much again for watching my channel and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you and uh, bye. Corporations are bringing back child labor in America. And some Republicans want to make it easier for them to get away with it. Since 2015, child labor violations have risen nearly 300%. And those are just violations government investigators have managed to uncover and document. The Department of Labor says it's currently investigating over 600 cases of illegal child labor in America. Major American companies like General Mills, Walmart, and Ford have all been implicated. Why on earth is this happening? The answer is frighteningly simple. Greed. Employers have been having difficulty finding the workers they need at the wages they're willing to pay, and rather than reduce their profits by paying adult workers more, employers are exploiting children. The sad fact of the matter is that many of the children who are being exploited are considered to be them rather than us because they're disproportionately poor and immigrant. So the moral shame of subjecting our children to inhumane working conditions when they ought to be in school is quietly avoided. And since some of these children or their parents are undocumented, they dare not speak out or risk detention and deportation. They need the money. This makes them easily exploitable. It's a perfect storm that's resulting in vulnerable children taking on some of the most brutal jobs in America. 
Folks, we've seen this before. Reformers fought to establish the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 for a reason, to curb the grotesque child labor seen during America's first Gilded Age. The U.S. banned most child labor. But now, pro-business trade groups and the Republican lackeys are trying to reverse nearly a century of progress. And they're using the so-called labor shortage as their excuse. Arkansas will no longer require 14 and 15 year olds to get a work permit before taking a job, a process that verified their age and required permission from a parent or guardian. A bill in Ohio would let children work later on school nights. Minnesota Republicans are pushing to let 16 year olds work in construction. And in Iowa, 14 year olds may soon be allowed to take certain jobs in meatpacking plants and operate dangerous machinery. It's all a coordinated campaign to erode national standards, making it even easier for companies to profit off children. Across America, we're witnessing a resurgence of cruel capitalism in which business lobbyists and lawmakers justify their actions by arguing that they're not exploiting the weak and vulnerable, but rather providing jobs for those who need them and would otherwise go hungry or homeless. Conveniently, these same business lobbyists and lawmakers are often among the first to claim we can't afford stronger safety nets that would provide these children with safe housing and adequate nutrition. So what can stop this madness? First, fund the Department of Labor so it can crack down on child labor violations. When I was Secretary of Labor, the department was chronically underfunded and understaffed. It still is because lawmakers and their corporate backers want it that way. And adequate nutrition. So what can stop this madness? First, fund the Department of Labor so it can crack down on child labor violations. When I was Secretary of Labor, the department was chronically underfunded and understaffed. It still is because lawmakers and their corporate backers want it that way. Second, increase fines on companies that break child labor laws. Current fines are too low and are treated as costs of doing business by hugely profitable companies that violate the law. Third, hold major corporations accountable for their supply chains. Many big corporations contract with smaller companies that employ children, which allows the big corporations to play dumb and often avoid liability. It's time to demand that large corporations take responsibility for their contractors. Fourth, reform immigration laws so undocumented children aren't exploited. And lastly, organize, fight against state laws that are attempting to bring back child labor. Are corporate profits really more important than the safety of children? Give me a spade, and I'll give you a hole. hole. Way oh, on the railroad. Dirt on my brow, but steal in my soul. Way oh, on the railroad. Picking up coal, and we're picking up speed. Shovel as much as the engine needs. Sweat and blood gonna earn my pay All the way to Frisco Bay Going through hills trying to make up time way oh on the railroad Ain't nothing gonna stand in the way of our lives way oh on the railroad Picking up coal and we're picking up speed Shovel as much as the engine needs Ain't no slave, but we slave away All the way to Frisco Bay Boss man says that a mile a the pace way oh on the railroad I'll make two for the look on his face way oh on the railroad Picking up coal and we're picking up speed Shovel as much as the engine needs Ain't no slave, but we slave away All the way to Frisco Bay They is trying to pan which route is best Way oh on the railroad Let's draw a straight line from east to west Way oh on the railroad Picking up coal and we're picking up speed Shovel as much as the engine needs 
Ain't no slave, but we slave away. All the way to Frisco Bay. Spano quarter and we'll spano man. Way, oh, 